My name is Anya Zilberstein, and I'm an assistant professor of history at Concordia University in Montreal, and I am also a fellow at the Rachel Carson Center in Munich. While I was doing research for my book project, which is on New England and Nova Scotia in the 17th and 18th centuries in the British Atlantic world, I came across a guy named Benjamin Thompson, later Count Rumford, who was born in Massachusetts, lived for a time in New Hampshire, and then after the American Revolution, left for Britain, never came back, spent the rest of his life after the 1780s working as a sort of scientific advisor to the court of many European, British and other European aristocrats and nobles um, and rulers, including helping them with projects to establish military gardens, prison gardens, and in Munich, uh, the English garden. By 1784, Thompson is in Munich working on, in the service of the Bavarian elector. And he proposes that Theodore convert his private hunting grounds into a public park for the city of Munich that you know, all people in Munich can enjoy. And again, this is all part of his attempt to promote the image of this benevolent leader. And um, he uses the model of Kew Gardens uh, in London as the basis for the design of the English garden. Unlike Kew Gardens, however, which was a botanical garden, uh, the English garden is built for recreational use and there isn't the sort of formal or even scientific interest in propagating plants. So one of the things that the English garden has a lasting influence for Munich is that it, it really defines for a lot of people the, the landscape of the city or the, or the kind of geography of the city. And even though it's huge, it's right in the middle of the city. And people still continue to enjoy this beautiful landscape, which of course has had many additions to it over the years across the 19th and 20th centuries, but still retains a lot of the um, architectural monuments that, that Rumford put in. The English garden was really clearly built as part of the urban landscape, although there's nothing urban about, um, about the garden. And because Munich is such a, Munich is not a city with, you know, in the 20th century that became a city of skyscrapers. Uh, when you're in the garden, you really feel like you're, uh, I mean, there are parts of it that are landscaped in such a way that you're not aware that you're in the city at all. He's really, he's influenced the, the geography of the city in other ways, or at least his influence has been, has been embedded in the geography of the city, like there are streets named after him, you know, cafes, bars. So Rumford is still sort of lurking in Munich.